Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is photo detectors. In the earlier video, we have discussed the light sources. We also discussed that the fiber optic cable is used. Suppose this is the core layer of fiber optic cable. At one end, source is connected. The light is emitted from the source. It travels through the fiber optic cable, which we call it as total internal reflection. At the output end, we have to connect a suitable detector. As the name indicates, the basic function of detector is to accept the incoming photons, incoming light rays and convert it into electrical signal. So this is the basic idea of using the detector at the output. These detectors are called photo detectors or optical detectors. Now the first part, what are the basic requirements of photo detectors? Uh, actually in this uh, series we are going to study different types of photo detectors presently we will talk about the basic requirements of photo detectors from the exam point of view you may expect the direct question like this explain the basic requirements of an optical detector or of a photo detector so i have made a list of basic requirements first is the photo detector should be should have high sensitivity at the operating temperature second linear response over wide range response means the graph of output versus input in a simplified language output of a photo detector is electrical signal it is usually a current input is the photons or incoming light rays so this response must be linear over a wide range next large electrical response as i said output is an electrical quantity let us say current so it should have a higher efficiency so that for even for small amount of light rays more current should be generated then short response time to obtain suitable bandwidth it is very much clear the response time of the detector must be fast response time means the time required to convert the optical signals into electrical signals then there should be minimum noise produced by the detector at the output. This noise may contain the dark current or any other types of noise which will uh, reduce down the signal quantity. So there should be a minimum noise by the detector. Then stability of the performance characteristics. The performance characteristics like output characteristics or any other characteristics like transfer characteristics should be stable. Next, the detector should have small size. We know that we are going to connect the detectors to the fiber optic cable and the size or the diameter of an optical cable is very small. So detector should have a small size. Then low bias voltage requirement. There should be minimum uh, bias voltage requirement for the selected detector. And last two points, it should have high reliability and low cost. So these are the major requirements of the optical or photo detectors. Now about the materials used for the photo detector. So I made a list of uh, certain common materials. The materials are silicon, germanium, gallium and arsenide. The two basic materials are silicon and germanium. The advantage of silicon is large band gap energy is required. Actually, when we are talking about the selection of a material, the material should be such that it should absorb the maximum number of uh, incoming photons and should be in a position to convert it into the electrical quantity. There should be minimum wastage of photons. So see if you are using silicon material, it has large band gap energy between valence band and conduction band. So the maximum number of photons are allowed to fall uh, in between the band gap energy. Then it has low dark current dark current is the current whenever the photo detectors are generated without applying any artificial light source that means let us say that the photo detector is connected at the output of optical cable and if no signal is transmitting through the cable still due to the ambient light some amount of current is generated at the output which is called as dark condition so current generated under darkness condition without any incoming uh, light rays is called the dark current. So it has low dark current and less noise compared to the other material. Another common material is the germanium material. Its advantage is it has 
a longer wavelength operating wavelength is large compared to the silicon but the major drawback is that it has high dark current now let us discuss few important characteristics of the photo detector so first characteristic is responsivity we know that in case of optical detector input is the photons that is light rays and output is electrical quantity so responsivity is actually related to the sensitivity of the photo detector is the ratio of detector output to the detector input next is noise equivalent power as the name indicates it is related to the noise current whenever the light rays are falling that means photons are falling the electron hole pairs are generated and after that these electron hole pairs are separated out so these generated charge carriers that is electron and holes are random in nature they are always uh, producing fluctuations in the output current so this produces the noise current so noise equivalent power that is nep is the ratio of noise current to the peak that is maximum peak radiant sensitivity this nep noise equivalent power can be also defined as the incident optical power required to produce s by n that is signal to noise ratio of unity that is 1 in 1 hertz bandwidth so this is the definition of uh, noise equivalent power next is the detectivity it is very simple the symbol is d and it is actually the reciprocal of nep that means if you want to write the definition it is ratio of peak radiant sensitivity to the noise current because it is reciprocal of noise equivalent power next fourth characteristic is the dark current just now we discussed this concept even if the light rays or photons are not falling on the photo detector still some amount of current is uh, generated at the output this may be because of the ambient light falling on the photo detector such currents are generated in the darkness condition so these currents are called dark currents we also discussed that the dark current should be as low as possible then fifth characteristic is spectral response the ability of a detector to give response to the incident light of different wavelengths is called the spectral response. So these are few important characteristics of photo detectors. Next is a conventional PN junction photodiode. This is the diagram related to PN junction photodiode. Apart from slight differences, it is similar to the normal PN junction diode. We know that in case of normal PN junction diode, there is a P region, then N region, between P and N region, there is a depletion a layer or depletion region. And when P is connected to the positive terminal of battery and N is connected to the N side is connected to negative terminal of battery, the diode is said to be forward passed. In case of photodiode, the connection is like this. This is the P-type material, this is N-type material. Between this, there is a depletion region and the light rays, this H nu indicates the incoming light rays where H is the Planck's constant. This symbol is called, is representing the frequency of the incoming light. So H nu represents the photons. The incoming photons are allowed to fall on the depletion region. Now, the depth at which this this in, uh, incident photons are reaching in the depletion region depends on the incoming wavelength rather they are directly proportional to the incident wavelength so if the width of this depletion region is large then there will be more area exposed to the incoming light but the drawback is that if you increase the width of this depletion region then the response time gets increased now whenever the incident light falls in the on the depletion region then these photons or energy particles strikes the atoms and the electrons are released whenever electrons are released the holes are formed that means you in a simplified language you can say like this whenever the incident photons are falling in on the depletion region then electrons are released from the atoms and holes are created that means electron hole pair is generated look at the connection 
This P type is connected to negative terminal of battery, N type is connected to positive terminal of battery. So we can say this particular diode, photodiode, is reverse biased because we are connecting P to the negative side and N to the positive terminal of a battery. When incident uh, light rays falls on the depletion region, then electron and hole pairs are generated. These holes, which are positive, gets attracted towards the negative terminal of battery. These electrons, which are having negative charge, gets attracted towards the positive terminal of battery. This battery is externally connected because of the motion of holes and electrons. The conventional current starts flowing through the external circuit. So this is the <coughs> simple working of uh, conventional PN junction photodiode. As we discussed, these photodiodes are operated in the reverse bias condition. Now these are the characteristics, characteristics of voltage versus reverse current. So this is the zero value. On this axis, we are plotting the voltage and you are getting uh, the reverse current like this. So this axis, this side represents the reverse bias voltage. We have learned the concept of dark current. Whenever any external light is not falling on the detector, still some current flows uh, at the output that means some current is generated at the output that is called the dark current which is very small current now whenever the some light intensity that means some certain number of photons are falling on the depletion region on the photodiode then different currents are generated so this is the graph of uh, current versus reverse current versus voltage so these are the characteristics of normal or conventional pn junction photodiode so dear students that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.